Residents and demonstrators at the Amona Outpost settlement have begun to get restless. Protesters are preparing for the worst as the Amona residents reject the evacuation order over their settlement, as well as the accompanying agreements promised to them. Here to discuss the facts on the ground are Mai Golan, a conservative activist and the CEO of Hebrew City, Professor Moshe Amirav, a professor of political science at the Hebrew University, and Ali Fould, the assistant director of Standing Together and and advocate for Israel. Thanks so much for coming in, guys. Thank you very much. Hello. All right, so to begin, Ari, I understand that you've been sleeping uh, for the past couple of nights in Amona, so you're really getting a sense of what's happening on the ground. What are the emotions that people are feeling? What have you witnessed? I've been speaking to many families, the kids especially, and they feel betrayed. The parents don't know how to explain this to the kids. I mean, they bought their homes 18 years ago. The government built the roads there, they gave them electricity, gave them water. Their only sinners are living in Judea. And, and how do they explain this to the kids? So the kids are, are really, they feel betrayed. They're not going to school for the last couple of weeks, and, and they just don't know what to do with themselves. They're saying, why is this happening? Uh, along with the claims that people are making, which really have no basis, they feel like they've just been betrayed by their own people, and they, they don't know where to turn. So let's talk about this settlement law. Um, you know, the settlement law being proposed has already made it past its initial reading, but where does Amona fit into that bill? Talk to us about Amona specifically. Well, that settlement is a fraud. You know, we're talking about 41 families who are, the majority of them are going to be kicked to the curb. There are only 11 families that in this settlement will be able, uh, you know, to live on the mountain and only for two years. So this is really not a solution for the Amona people. But the most important he thing here, Natasha, is the fact that, you know, uh, they're talking about the fact that this is a private land and Amona should be evacuated. You know, I heard the mayor of Jerusalem, Nir Barakat, just a couple of days ago saying that uh, there are thousands of houses of Arabs on private home lands of Jews that are not being evacuated at the same time. Nothing is being done. And if Amona will be evacuated, those houses will be needed to evacuate it as well. So you need to remember that in the end of the day, we're talking about a place that uh, is belonged to the Jewish country. It belongs to the Jewish nation. And using the court, uh, you know, to try and get some justice, it's basically just using the tool to destroy and demolish a beautiful and very successful community. Uh, and, and Amona is the first one. Next will be Ofra, and next will be uh, many places in Israel that shouldn't be allowed, because in the end of the day, we have to remember that Amona and Ofrat and all these places are, are a part of Israel. And just like, the, just like they're not evacuating the University of Tel Aviv, that is also sitting on a settlement, because it's Sheikh Muniz, if someone doesn't remember, uh, Amona and the rest of the places shouldn't be evacuated. And those radical lefties and those very big humanitarians from the court that are fighting against those Jewish people need to stop being hypocrite and remember that Israel belongs to the Jews, all of Israel land after all the years we've been fighting to come back here. Professor, what is your take on this situation? Uh, when I see it, uh, it's a kind of a deja vu. I remember other places and other times where we did, uh, we Israelis did the same thing. I mean, we left uh, the area and uh, we put uh, Jews in a terrible situation. And uh, I'm speaking about, uh, not now about the human aspect, I'm, I'm trying, I came here actually to speak a little bit about the political issue. And the political issue, uh, if I have to say it in one sentence, the majority of the people of Israel, the majority of the settlers, the majority of the government, the prime minister, I agree as an Israeli, I agree with them. All of them say that we have to evacuate Amona. All of them. Now, Amona is only a symbol. I mean, it's what is it, 40 families or whatever. We're speaking about the West Bank. And soon, according to Netanyahu, the prime minister, um, if we have peace, we will have many Amonas. Many Amonas. And then it might be that it will be like we have seen before. Then it will be really big because then we are speaking about evacuating thousands, thousands. Here we are speaking about 40, 50 people. That's, not, that's nothing. So we have to see Amona in a perspective of what's going on and what will be the solution for the political situation. If we have peace, according, I'm, I'm now defending the prime minister, okay? I'm not in his party. I didn't vote for him, but uh, he is my prime minister. And the prime minister says, we have to do it. And I'm, I'm not the only one. The majority of the people are in favor 
of doing it. Now, some of the residents uh, have pledged nonviolence when the evacuation uh, does take place. Um, but police are still concerned that there will be violence when when this this happens, right? Should we be worried about violence? Should we be worried about clashes? What can we expect so to happen? Before I answer that question, it's an important question. I just want to relate to something the professor said. Unlike all the other evacuations that happened, which came from the legislative branch of government, the Knesset, there were government decisions. This one was not. For the last nine years, the nation has voted right. The Supreme Court has a very left-wing ideology, and they're dictating Israeli policy according to that ideology. It is the most undemocratic thing that a court system can do. It's unacceptable, it's immoral, it's unethical. Now, in terms of Amona, again, the people went there in Hebrew, we say, but Tom Lev, innocently. The government paid for the utilities. So if it's anyone's fault, it's the state's fault, not the people living there. The state should pay the Arabs after they bring proof of ownership, which till to date, no one has brought proof of ownership. Uh -huh. There's no private person saying, hey, you took my land. No such thing. This whole thing is a political move, I agree with the professor, but a political move by the Supreme Court, which is absolutely undemocratic. We have to remember that the Supreme Court has been ruling the country of Israel and the members of the Knesset that we choose, ac chose, actually, in a lot of topics around Israel. I don't remember us going to the elections and choosing the Supreme Court to make our decisions about our life, but they are still doing the whatever they want. One third of the people who choose the next judges are judges. Mm -hmm. So it's a I, cycle. But I, just, I, to, wanna, I wanna just talk about these, the violence for one second. Let's hear what the professor has to say for a second. Yeah, I have to tell you that uh, in a democratic country, yeah. The majority decides. Okay. And, and, and may I remind you, you? And you, and let me finish. But may I remind you, let me finish. The majority let, let of me the finish. country chose the a right wing government, so those exactly. left radical and judges exactly. won't control so our lives. Exactly. So this majority in a democratic, a democratic country, uh -huh. you have to respect the decision of the democratic system in of this the country. Of the, of the government. Of the government. Of the people, government. the ministers, and the members of the Knesset that we chose. And, and you, you challenge, you challenge, you are challenging the Knesset and the government and the prime minister and the judges. You know, it's really, it's really hilarious that, when, the, uh, when the high Supreme Court I, judges I, I, keep I talking about democracy and freedom of speech, but when it comes to the actually making the, the decisions of the majority of the members of the Knesset that the people have chosen, you are constantly uh, dismissed and stamp on every decision that is being made by, the, by I, the members I, of the I Knesset. Think, I think that we have to stay a democracy. You're right, and, but uh, the democracy is... What you are saying now saying. is very dangerous to the Israeli democracy. But the, the democracy... All right, so let's talk about, let's change the subject. I mean, we, clearly we're seeing, you know, different opi differing opinions on what should be taking place in Amona, but we want to know what is happening right okay. now in the sense that are we going to be seeing violence when Israeli security okay. forces go into this territory so and, and try to take the people spent, out? The time that I spent in Amona right now, the residents there are having meeting after meeting. There are tears, real tears going down. It's a horrific, horrific thing to see. The idea that you're kicking Jews out of their homes in the land of Israel is something that literally brings tears to my eyes. In terms of violence, I don't know who's spreading those rumors, blood libels, lies. The only side that was violent in 2005 was, was the police. And so 2005 was the last time. Right, correct. Just, it was horrific. Specified to our viewers. When it was the last time that they came in and they actually destroyed nine homes that were built by the actual Israeli government, the, the Ministry of Housing. They were legally built. And they destroyed those homes with such violence that I, I can't even express a disappointment. Uh, this time, the, government, the police had said they will not bring in horses and batons. Okay, that's lovely, but you're kicking people out of their homes. That is violent. All right, so I mean, in, in your guys' opinion, what should the solution be here? What would be the best option for everybody, for both the settlers uh, or the Israelis living in the settlement and, and also just, you know, the nation as a whole and the Palestinian people? So I, I, again, you're asking for a solution. If there's a person saying it's my land, then the solution is bring them to court. But there is no side of that that's saying it's my land. So the solution is let the Jews live there until someone claims the land is theirs. And within the Israeli borders, when someone claims the land is theirs, that a building was built on it, you pay that person money worth of the land. There are two dunam out of the 500 dunams of Amona that are being claimed as Arab. You're destroying 500 dunams because a person is claiming verbally uh, ownership over two? without any proof of purchase, why do I need a solution? Let the Jews stay there. Professor? Uh, the solution is uh, either to put the Israeli law on the West Bank and declare that this is Israel. Right now, these people in Amona are abroad. They're not in Israel, legally. So we have to decide. At least 
in this sense, I, uh, uh, I am with the Prime Minister who says, when we have peace, we will have to give up on, let's say, 90% of the West Bank, and then 10% we will annex. But now we didn't annex Amona, we didn't annex 10%, we didn't annex anything. So the West Bank is abroad. And the, if you ask me in a broad perspective, we have to decide, what do we want? Do we want peace with part of Israel, which is the idea of uh, Netanyahu? He says, we are ready for peace and we will give up on between 6 to 10% of is of the West maybe Bank. Maybe we don't need to give up anything. No, no, maybe, for maybe, maybe, but, we just need but to claim I'm, our I'm not the prime minister. I'm telling here. Can I just say one sentence? about what the Israeli majority is thinking? What we hear here. I mean, this is a, a, le a very legalistic uh, opinion. You keep Even talking your about opinion, majority. The majority have voted, voted right. for right. The majority for, have voted for the for the whole the of country minister, of Israel Netanyahu. to stay no. safe. No, not for Netanyahu. No, no. 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 when the majority so, vote. I'm a political science expert. Maybe I don't understand. There's a coalition government. Who is the prime minister will, in prime Israel Prime minister does today. not have a majority. It's a coalition government. Seconds. It's a Let's coalition. Let's hear from Mike. Let's hear from Mike. I just want to say something because both sides here said very specific, uh, you know, solutions for Amona. And I want to speak for a second, uh, uh, generally speaking. Uh, Amona, my opinion, obviously, is that Amona should stay where she is and not be evacuated. This is our country and we shouldn't have given it or given it up to anyone. But I want to say, generally speaking, so we won't have this problem in the future. Uh, the solution is to bring the power back to the democracy, to the people of the country of Israel. We should gain and demand, not by, not by you know, some sort of a, uh, uh, an asking way, by, by our basic right to get our power back from the radical left Supreme Court that is making our lives look like hell in various uh, decisions and, and uh, you know, states of life in Israel. Uh, the country and the members of the Knesset should, have, should remember immediately who chose them, why were they chosen? And who is the public that they are representing? They are representing the people that they promised to keep their settlements, that they promised to keep their country safe, not to make uh, the, the high Supreme Court happy with their decisions when they're sitting in their high, you know, uh, buildings, uh, very detached from the reality on the streets. I'm living this reality in South Tel Aviv, and I know the people in Amona are feeling the same. So my solution is uh, to maybe remind uh, if this settlement, Chas Shalom, God forbid, will happen. I believe that the people of Amona and the people of the rest of Israel will remember who not to vote next time around. And that's what the politicians should remember. Well, I guess we're going to just have to wait and see what happens. Thank you guys so much for coming Thank in. You for Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.